Welcome everyone to Cracking the IR Code with yours truly, Stacy Buck. I am so excited to bring you this new feature. So let me tell you a little bit about how this is going to work. So all of the recordings are going to sit on the RadRx YouTube channel. So you will have the ability to go to the YouTube channel at any time and view any of the recordings but I'm going to be posting weekly on social media whenever there is a new case study available, primarily on LinkedIn. So those of you who are not connected with me on LinkedIn, I highly recommend that you go over and you connect with me on LinkedIn. The reason why I'm suggesting that you connect with me on LinkedIn is because when I post to LinkedIn that a new case study is available for viewing on YouTube, I will also be posting a PDF document with the actual case study with all of the highlights and the final codes that you're going to see on the screen. So if you want to be able to grab that document and have that for easy reference, then I'm going to recommend that you follow me there on LinkedIn. Facebook right now does not allow documents to be posted when posts are scheduled. And I do schedule all of my social media posts. So with that said, let me jump right into the first case study that we're going to look at. The first one that I've chosen is a mesenteric angiogram with an embolization. And what I've done to just keep these as brief as possible is I, I've gone through cases and I have pre-highlighted cases with the most pertinent information that we're going to use for code selection. And then I've also inserted the codes within the report and a little bit of the thought process as well. You'll see some codes that are highlighted in purple. Those are the codes that are going to be part of the final codes assigned. And then you'll see other codes throughout with a line through them, um, just showing you that the code has changed based on the extent of the procedure performed or where the catheter was moved to. So with that said, let's take a look at the first case. Let's go and jump right on in. So first I'm going to start with just reading the summary at the top of the report. It says mesenteric angiogram with super selective angiogram of inferior mesenteric artery branches via ultrasound guided left common femoral artery access and coil embolization of marginal branches from the left colic artery. I always like to start with reading that summary so I get an idea of what I'm looking for in the report. Um, whenever we have that summary documented. And then normally what I will do in the next step is also to look at the clinical history. It's very important to read through the clinical history for two reasons. One, we want to determine whether or not prior diagnostic imaging has been performed. And then we also want to look for the clinical indication that is going to be treated. Very commonly, clinical indication will determine the, the procedure code that we're going to use and then again, we want to know whether or not the physician is going to be doing diagnostic angiography in conjunction with the therapeutic intervention. The one statement that I highlighted in this clinical history says, she is referred for mesenteric angiogram, potentially with a provocative study and potentially with intervention. So that tells me that the imaging that is taking place is going to be diagnostic. The physician has not yet made the decision as to whether or not there's going to be an intervention for this patient. So we know that we're going to be coding our diagnostic angiography. The next highlight that you see is sedation. Um, there's conscious sedation that was administered and that is documented. We have the total time. So we have 99152 and 99153 times four based on the total time. Now, if you are coding for pro fee versus facility, that is going to look a little different in that Medicare is not going to pay for the additional units of the moderate sedation, but you may have other payers that will pay you for the additional units of, of the moderate sedation. So just know that whether or not you report the additional units is going to depend on your particular circumstance. In some circumstances, it may only be the 99152 for the moderate sedation. So now let's jump down into the procedure section and of course, a lot of the procedures always start with the same standard language about the prep for the patient. So let's jump down to where the procedure itself actually starts, where the physician states ultrasound survey of the left inguinal region was completed with images stored and sent to PACS. The skin and subcutaneous tissues were generously infiltrated with 2% lidocaine for local anesthesia. A 21 gauge microneedle was then advanced under ultrasound guidance into the left common femoral artery. 
And you'll see here that I noted code 76937 because we have all of the required elements documented in order to report that code. So that is going to be permitted here. Then when we get further down into the report, we know that the physician gained access at that left inguinal region. So we're actually at the left common femoral artery. We see the next highlighted section in the report mentions that the catheter was then advanced over the Benson wire to the level of the T11. So at that point, our catheterization code was 36200 for catheterization of the aorta, but the physician didn't stop there. The physician continued to move the catheter into the superior mesenteric artery, which is the first order vessel off of the abdominal aorta. And then at that time, the physician performed an angiogram of the superior mesenteric artery. So you see at that point, the catheterization code changed to 36245. You also see there that I have modifier 59 appended to that code. That's because it needs to be appended. So it doesn't bundle with other catheterization codes that you're going to see um, assigned as part of this case. And then for angiography, it states that angiogram of the mesenteric was completed, but what you're going to do when you're coding this case is you want to make sure when a physician states an angiogram is performed that there are findings for that angiogram. So that's really, if you're coding this in real time, that would be more of like a placeholder for that 75726 before you assign that as a final code. You'll want to verify that the physician actually has documented findings, which we'll see when we get over to the final section of the report. Then from there, the physician elected to catheterize the inferior mesenteric artery. So now the physician is in a separate vascular family that is directly off of the aorta. And so that starts out as being a 36245 because it's a separate vascular family. The inferior mesenteric is a first order vessel off of the abdominal aorta. And then from there, the physician does imaging of the inferior mesenteric artery. So you'll notice I have 36245 with the line through it. That's because the physician is going to move the catheter further within this vascular family, which is going to cause the 36245 to be bundled. Again, you see that I noted the 75726 for the imaging. We're going to have to verify further in the report that the findings are actually documented by the physician. So note that I've assigned code 75726 a second time for this procedure. 75726 can be reported per vascular family. It would not be appropriate to report 75726 for the superior mesenteric and then 75774 for the inferior mesenteric. You can assign 75726 one time for each separate vascular family. So now let's go on to the next section and jump down to where it says the combination of the glide wire and the microcatheter was used to select the left colic artery. So at that point, once the physician moved from the IMA into the left colic, that would be a second order catheterization 36246. But the physician didn't stop there. The physician then moved the catheter into a marginal branch. So now once the catheter is moved into a marginal branch, that now becomes a 36247, which is for third order or higher. And then with that catheter movement, the physician performs an angiogram of the marginal branch. So that will be coded with 75774 because we've already used 75726 in this vascular family. And again, we'll have to verify in the findings that the physician actually gave us the diagnostic findings for that particular vessel. Then when we look down to the next section highlighted in blue, it says because of the small caliber of these vessels, the catheterization of the direct vessels was abandoned and coiling of the marginal branch of the segment was elected. So the physician wanted to do additional catheterization, was not able to do so. So the coil embolization ends up um, staying in that marginal branch. And so in that marginal branch, three coils were placed um, and for this particular case. So there's no additional catheterization coding because the catheter did not go any further. Now, if we go back to the beginning of the report, if we looked at the clinical indication, I didn't read through the clinical history um, because it was longer, but we see in the clinical history that the patient has episodes of the GI bleeding. So this embolization, the imaging and embolization is actually occurring because of a history of GI bleeding. So based on that, we know that the embolization code is going to be 37244, which is assigned to treat a bleed. 
Then once the embolization is performed, the physician performs a follow-up angiogram of that marginal branch to check the results of the embolization. And that post-procedure imaging is going to be bundled with the embolization and there's nothing further to code. That code 75898 that's available for the completion angiography, that's actually only going to be used with embolization codes 61624 and 61626. It would not be used with anything with three in the range of 37241 through 37244. So the discussion section of this report, this is where the physician gives us detail on the findings. So this is where we want to come and verify that all the codes that we were considering for the report are documented here. So we have the ultrasound survey of the left inguinal region demonstrates complete patency of the left common femoral vein and left common femoral artery. So that further supports our 76937 for the ultrasound guidance. Then we wanna make sure that we have all of the findings for the angiography codes that are noted in the report. So we did assign a code for angiogram of the superior mesenteric artery. We see findings documented here. We also see findings for the other branches as well. Um, that we assign codes for the splenic, or I'm sorry, the marginal branch of the splenic flexure, that was 75774. Now, if you're looking at this case and if you're wondering why there isn't anything assigned for the left colic, it's because up here at the top of the report, it doesn't specifically say that the catheter was placed for diagnostic imaging for imaging of the left colic. So we don't know if separate imaging of the left colic was performed or if the left colic was visualized as a result of another angiogram. So without that level of detail, we would not actually code it. So that is a summary of the coding of this case. And so here are all the final CPT procedure codes for you, for your reference and where they came from. And I do just want to make a note about the X modifiers and use of modifier 59. So whenever I am going through case studies with you, I'm always going to use modifier 59 as the default NCCI modifier to let you know that you need to use an NCCI modifier. With that said, if you have payers that are using the X modifiers, you will use the X modifiers as appropriate. And then in some cases, you may even be using units instead of modifiers. There are a lot of different other ways. You might be using RTLT modifiers. You might be using the 50 modifier. Um, obviously, you're going to always follow specific payer guidelines. Um, but again, just in general, I'm going to use modifier 59. And then if you're considering the X modifiers when you're identifying a separate structure, that would be reported with an XS. And then if you have an unusual overlapping service, that would be XU. And then XU is typically used whenever you perform a therapeutic intervention, and then you're reporting the diagnostic and geography, then that is going to be reported with XU because that is normally bundled. So I hope you enjoyed this first case study and you learned a lot from it and look forward to more cases in the future. And I just wanna point out, if you're looking for some in-depth um, training on interventional radiology coding, I highly recommend that you check out my online training course. I've got lots of folks with great testimonials that have come out of that. Coders with little or no IR experience have taken that course and they have sat for the CERC exam and they have passed it on the first try. If you're not quite ready to jump into the course itself, then of course I have my book, Cracking the IR Code, Your Comprehensive Guide to Mastering Interventional Radiology Coding. We are now taking pre-orders for the 2024 edition. So if you're looking for a great reference manual, 800 pages long, very comprehensive, has a lot of detailed explanation, then I highly recommend you check it out. So thank you for joining me this week and I look forward to connecting with you in the future.